Welcome back. Today we're going to tie the Peanut Envy. This fly has a very unique past in that it started out as me knocking off Russ Madden's Circus Peanut. Not a complete knockoff, but Russ's fly was such a great, and still is, one of the greatest fish catching flies I've ever tied. It was a little heavier than I wanted it, and it had, and it was a little flashier than I wanted it, and so, but I kept working well off of his pattern, and I was looking at it, I wanted a little bit more movement in it, but mostly I just wanted it lighter, and so, hence the name Peanut Envy, because it started out because uh, Russ's fly was so good that I took a shot at it, and <clears throat> thanks. So anyway, what this fly is is it's a low-profile fly. Unlike Russ's flies, which tend to be, his are cactus chenille, and they're a little bit brighter in your, you know, than these are. It's a little toned down, different materials. It's got a cone head instead of the lead eyes. I just basically lighten it up. And I want to just briefly talk about why we tied, you know, why these flies are in existence. This is what I consider a low profile fly. When this thing's wet, it's going to just kind of get tubular, right? And it's, it, there's a really big trend in fly fishing and tying right now is that everything's bigger, gaudier, brighter, and everything's kind of reactionary. It's, we've lost, you know, we've kind of lost touch with the food-based flies. And, you know, we got sculpt and we, and, it, and we got all these colors and stuff and everything's kind of blown up on us. And really that you have to have two styles of flies, including your small dace and your small minnow patterns and your little old school flies like your gray ghosts and stuff like that, you should still have that stuff with you. And the low profile fly like this one is absolutely necessity to me. This fly, for all of my guides, me and everybody around here, in the last five, say six, seven, maybe eight years now, when you talk about numbers of fish over 20, 22, this fly, it's, it's gonna be close with a dungeon, but I think this is still gonna be top producer. It's a low profile fly, meaning that it, it, it tends to be more in the, in the lower lights, but not always. But I want to show you one other thing, because this one's, this is, a, this is the brown and tan version. This fly has a very light colored belly, right? And a dark top. This is my go-to color. This is the, if I have one, I'm only, oh, for sure. But if you live anywhere where there's chestnut lamprey or any other type of leech lamprey style, Leeches all have a lighter colored belly. This is my go-to color. I absolutely love this. It's just that UV tan, a bottom, and then it's got a dark brown top. I'm not going to do that one, but I want you to be aware of that. Uh, I, you know, I, I didn't even know we had that many of them out here in Montana. In Michigan, where I'm from, they were everywhere. I was fishing the, the Henry's Fork one day and eating lunch, and all of a sudden, beside the boat, it's just like a sci-fi movie. They just come out of everywhere. I've never seen such a thing. It's, literally hundreds and hundreds of them just come to the surface. I don't know what they were doing. I don't think it was a mating thing, but, and, and it was obvious the fish were on them, so we got on some flies. And I'll show you a picture of some, if I can find it. I'm going to try to put it in this so you can see one sitting beside that dark brown one. You can see how really close they are. But on to the fly. This is a low-profile, food-based fly. You can see it's, it's mostly, it's a very simple fly like most of mine. The ingredients in this fly... We're going to use this, uh, this is a Kelly Gallup series hook. I think it might even have my name on it, but uh, yes, it does. Gallup's Articulated Flies. This fly is almost an identical match to the 2460, which I have tied on for years. This fly just came out this year. It comes in all the sizes we use. It's an MF Montana fly, and it's a ring eye. High, ring eye. We're going to use a size 1 in the front, size 4 in the back. So that's our hook. It's going to have uh, olive brown or, or dark olive, what, you know, it's your preference, I like olive brown. Olive brown marabou for the tail, that's going to be in the back side. We're going to use copper flashaboo in, in the tube, I'm going to go over this in a bit. But I want you to see something else here. Jeremy uses this, uh, these muted colors in a lot of his. This is the holographic copper, and this, what's this one called? The speckled flash. Speckled flash. The speckled flash. And it's really muted down. It's kind of, it's kind of looks like it's got little black specks in it. And at first I wasn't really, you know, because I've always tied it with the copper. And I got to tell you, when you think about it, I don't really like a lot of flash in these. In my, in my bait flies, 
and my bait style flies, anything that's food based, I'm not a real big fan of, fan of a lot of flash in that, right? But, and so it makes more sense to me, and I didn't really use this. I'm gonna start tying this more muted color of copper in there, but that's what I started with. And so, and that's what's gonna be in this one. Body is just olive, look too high, olive ice dub. This stuff is in all, in every color of this, every series, that's what this is in there. I'm gonna use this Grizzly Variant uh, Strung Hackle. Absolutely love this stuff. It's, it's, it's the Grizzly, the, the Variant, and what you'll see with these colors when you use these Variant style is it's dyed over a color and it still leaves some of that natural brown tip in there when you'll see it when I pull the feather out. And it really, to me, just dresses it up. I don't think it makes much difference when you're actually fishing it, but it does make a difference to me when I'm looking at it in the vise and, and when I first pull them out. The rubber legs are going to be uh, the crazy legs, yellow, golden, pearl flake. Uh, I use this in all my olive flies. Every one of them is going to be the same color. I really dig these. It's going to have a brass cone. It's going to be a large cone. Uh, if you're in a, if you're, you know, if you want to scale it down, you can. I don't ever go bigger than this, but if you want to go down to medium, you can. It's just a brass cone. I don't use tungsten on these. I don't want it to be. It's not diving. My counter wraps just copper brassy wire. No, no, nothing new there. And then the .38 beetle line or the surf line, the 20 pound. Just go with the 19 strand. Make sure you get the 19. So onward we go. And like I said. For sure, this is one of the, if, if, there's, if there's three flies, the guarantee fish, the dungeon's going to be one, the, the peanut envy's going to be one, and the barely legal's going to be one. If I, had to, if I had to be left on an island with three flies, this would be it. Because this one, it's not flashy. You're going into the bait style, and you're, you're into a true fish-producing fly. So it behooves you to learn to tie this one well. So we're going to start, oh, I forgot to mention I'm using GSP 100 on here. Uh, I'm going to start, this is called a stack tail because I'm going to put two. I do this on virtually every fly I tie. I don't use a single marabou. Take all the crap out of the bottom of this. When you pull it up, you can always tell you want all those fibers to be the same length, right? So I've got a nice wispy tail here. They're all the same length. And like always, use your hook as your gauge to tell you how long your tail should be. Butt it up. It should be at least the length of the hook if you air, air long. So here's the length of the hook. I'm going to switch that over. Set it. And now I always pull on one side. I keep this feather on the, my side. And I all the way up to the front. You can see I left a gap here of thread, so I never, I can see that thread. And what that thread tells you when you, where I started it, I didn't start at the eye. You'll see a lot of books and videos say start right at the eye. Leave yourself a gap so when you see that, you know that that's where you got to stop and you won't rush the head of the fly. Back we go. I built that all on this. You're looking at hook. This side over here is where I have this. I'm going to take another light, light one. Whoops, not before I put my copper in. This is why it's a stack. Okay, now, every video I've ever done, every single one, people have seen me drop that stuff out of these tubes. And everybody writes in, where do we get those tubes? You get them here. We sell them here. You can, I don't know where else, probably a lot of places sell them. But it's a, they're the Dan Bailey tubes, is, and we... We sell them here. They're the handiest things for flash view on A lot of stuff you can put in these. So I'm just going to pull off. Don't go heavy on this. And maybe if you were using the stuff Jeremy uses, the, the more muted stuff, you might be able to get away with a little bit more. I, I Three to four turns is, or three to four strands is all I use. I don't want this thing to be crazy, gaudy, flashy. I want it to be just a little bit of sparkle in there. So right here, I'm going to set this first one, give it two or three turns, and now we, I wet that, so just like I do the marabou, so I can everything stays in place. And now I'm going to pull this to where it's just the length of the tail, or maybe, maybe just right at the tip. Maybe one or two hanging back, but not. don't let a whole bunch hang back there. Now, 
you can see the first one just go in here butt your scissors next to it and now they're all the same length if you wet that and set it down on your table it won't go all over the place and you can get when you tie your next fly you just go over there and grab it so back to this flashaboo thing I have two in this one right it's just it's these are just super simple you leave them on the ends you could have four you can see the space you could have four or five in here you dump them in and they it's just one of the best organizational tools ever and you, you know you just stack them in a drawer they're, they're simple so now we're going to put our marabou wherever it went wet that keep a sponge on your table and just do this do not put this stuff in your mouth you get goofier than Johnny so this one you're just going to go it has dyes in it and that's not good for you so this one we're going to put right on top make sure it's just the same length as the other tail come right over top and catch that now let that on this one we're going to hold it on the other side and we're just basically coming forward and we're building a taper don't go past where we started right there we just built the taper we just we're just building a wedge to our fly take a piece of copper this is brassy Whoop. this is brassy the size of it and don't short yourself let give yourself enough to work with now I left my thread up here instead of going back so that we can start right here right on top and away just a little bit away from me and I'm pull this one on the back side comes back at me and I'm going to come back I'm going to bring this to the halfway point and cut that piece off I'm just accentuating it to everything I put on and I'm trying to accentuate my taper now I'm going to come back here we're going to always end your you should end now we've got one two three four we've got four products on here and the wire being the fourth and when we get done your thread should be hanging right here I don't care if you put 50 things on there when you're done that should be hanging right at the gouge right where the bend or the barb starts and goes up right so when that's hanging there you can see it's it's right in place so now we're going to put on our what that tell and, and and the reason you do that the reason you pay attention to where that's hanging down is that if you don't the, the the most common error you can see right there that's hanging right where it belongs the most common error in fly tying is to rush the head and that's why we leave this gap so we've got room and we see not to go forward the other one is to have flies to where they have a body that has some you know there's some materials over here they're here maybe it start, the body starts up here and the reason is is you didn't use this as part of your it's a measuring tool it tells you everything starts and ends there and that way you don't have a empty you'll see a lot of flies they'll miss over here or suddenly it'll be way up here their tails are not in the right position it's because you're not using that as part of your as a as a tool to use how to measure it and so getting that and all your flies by the way and it doesn't matter if you for example if you're tying a low dress steelhead fly or something like that or an Atlantic or any maybe it's just your style it doesn't matter maybe you're always you want it up here all your flies should look the same the difference is is if they all look the same it means you're using your, your hook and you're using it as a gauge if one's here and one's there it's telling you that you don't have the consistency you need and your flies aren't if your flies aren't consistent they're not stable they're not they're just not durable and so you get in the habit of putting it in in the same place ending starting everything goes in the same spot and they'll become more durable and you become a faster tire so I put that in I tied a slight I shaped it in my hand I made a slight V I'll do it again when I do the front one a little bit skinnier at the bottom a little thicker at the top first one we come around you grab the tail get a hold of the tail don't just put your hands here grab the thing so that you cannot possibly spin it set that first one come around fourth fifth one pull it again just keep moving forward right to the gap we left now we're going to take one of the two I pulled two of these um, grizzly variants out and I want you know I want the skinnier of the two the one that's not quite as long of fibers 
in the back because it's going to everything's a taper we're trying to build a taper here but what i want and think you'll be able to see it in there is that what you can see are this this little bit of bronzy gold tip that's can you see that not really all right well it's just a color thing that's why i like that grizzly variant i don't like schlopping on these things i like i like that little bit of shine that neck hackle gives you and that's what this is is neck hackle trimmings So you notice that I left, this is called aftershaft, this fuzzy crap at the bottom down here. That's what this stuff is. And when you see when I pull these, I try to leave just a little bit of this fuzzy stuff when I start on all my flies, I do that. Just a little bit of that fuzzy stuff in the back. So when I do my first turn, it's just a little fuzzier than the rest of it. And it just, it's just a personal thing. It doesn't, when that fly gets wet, I'm sure you don't even know it's there. So you're going to take your, from your right shoulder, butt it up to there, to your thread. You're going to butt the hackle stem into the thread. Butt it in there. Do one turn from right to left. Come from left to right. Go over it. Go two in front of it and cinch it down. It, you can pull that. Now it's it, the thing is nice and tight, and the thing you're going to notice is that the the shiny side of the hackle, the convex side of the hackle, is facing to my right. I'm not asking this. I don't tie it in this way, bend it this way, and start it to wrap that way. Do two 45 degree angles and ask that feather to stay in this plane and wrap. This way, I just start. It's right where it belongs, and that also has this convex side. It starts to wrap around the body of the, of the fly so it's it looks the way it's supposed to do not air with really short hackles here you'll frequently see people tie with these things and they'll use these stubby little hackles that doesn't that doesn't create the effect you're trying to make this you're trying to look like gaps in between it you're, you're creating this barring effect with your hackle if you use that stubby little stuff it just looks prickly all over the place and it doesn't fold into the body. It just kind of, it, it just looks not so good. So one complete turn right there, a, a hundred, you know, if you do two, that's fine. And get that first one set. So we got a nice one set. Now set your hackle at an angle if you're using a rotary and go back like this, nice even turns, you can see. If you're not using a rotary, you should have your hackle pliers. Just turn and make nice even wraps and come you know all the way around so everything's nice and even now that copper wire we put in there is our counter wrap all right so we're going to grab this you got the stem of the the hackle in your left hand you hook that tip right here this is the tip of the hackle and that's what this does this counter wrap secures this entire hackle all the way through with wire so if fish tooth gets in there breaks it it's not going to come unwrapped set your wire if you're using a rotary vise set your wire at whatever angle you you know however many turns you want to end up here and just proceed quickly through those hackles it's not don't waste your time just sitting there trying to catch every you're not gonna if you try you're not gonna capture hackle uh, fibers in there very often if you go fast if you sit and try you end up kind of you wiggle your way through and you end up trapping more than you do if you just haul through it if that made sense. If it didn't, see step one. All right, now, got perfect amount of room for the head. Miss that stem. You can see we got nice wispy hackle. And what that does is when it gets wet, it all lays back, back into the fly and it'll create a barring effect. So now we gotta put on our legs and our marabou. The front one, this is the we like to have two. I don't break these into two pieces. I try to keep them as one piece when I start so the ends are still attached. You can see that's still attached. Just easier to work with. Get a kind of a rough idea where the center of these are so you're not fighting it. So hold it up. Just get it kind of in the center. When you hold them down, they're roughly in the center. Now we're going to set these. All rubber legs are set the same. We're going to come in here. We're going to go from... Give me you. Drop you. We're going to go from right to left, and we're going to put one turn of uh, thread right over the top of it. Kind of mess that up. 
And so what you see me doing when I do that is I'm just getting them to see that they're at the right length. You see, I don't have any pressure on this thread at all. And now I'm going to come with no pressure on the thread from left to right. And I'm going to put a figure eight right over the top of those. Now I'm going to do one, two turns right in front. Now, I don't think you can see that. I grabbed a hackle there. I don't think you can see the X on it. Can you see that, Jeremy? There's no X. I've got, I did a, a figure eight over the top. I put two turns directly in front of it. And then watch as I pull. I pull down nice and tight. It simultaneously compresses all around the legs. They're set exactly where they belong. And they're not going to slide off to one side or the other. And they're not rolling. They're not doing crazy stuff. They're, they're right where they belong. Now we're going to put one medium-sized hackle or uh, marabou in here. I was pulling these out before we started filming. I want to show you something. This, I mean, I start, I buy this stuff by the pound, right? And you never know what you're going to get. It doesn't matter if it's you, me, or whoever. And so I start with this thing that's forever big, right? And it's, and I go through it, and I end up culling 30% minimum of a natural product. And so I, I'm always talking about it, I never show it. But just to begin with, this one's not great either because all of this is wasted and the dye is still kind of connected to it. and It's got it all kind of gross on the edges, but it's workable on the tips. But when people have asked me, well, what do you mean by, by you know, culling it out, what's bad? And so I grabbed, this was just boom, 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 as fast as I could pull them out of that thing. So here's one that's really crap. This is a worthless feather. There's nothing you can do with this tip. It's just, it's not marabou. The marabou's down below it, right? And so this stuff really doesn't have a function. Here's one that's the same thing, just slightly shorter. This particular one you could use as a cull for a cover on the side, so you wouldn't have to totally throw that one away. And here's one that didn't develop. It's just, they're just junk. They don't, they don't have a purpose. So you just gotta, and like I say in, in all of it, do not save your culls. I see people when I'm tying all the time, they put them back in the bag. I'm like, why, why would you do that? Just get them gone. They're junk. Junk's junk. And, you're, and like I said, with any natural, you're going to have color. You're going to have, you're just going to lose some of your product. So this is just the overwing. The overwing should go at least a third to not halfway back your tail, back here. It doesn't end up here. It doesn't end at the body. It goes into here. So when everything's wet, it's all one piece. Okay, so tie him in. If you, and this is a, even though there's a lot of steps to this fly, did you see what just happened right there? I rolled that over, I put a lot of pressure on that, and I rolled that hackle towards you, and that's not good. And then you saw me back it off. There's no, it's no sin to back your materials off, and, you know, it's, fix it. If it's not right, fix it. So now we've got a four turn head. Ooh, and I caught that. I caught my hook and scratched my thread. With GSP on my heads, I always put a drop of lacquer on them. Um, GSP just doesn't, it just doesn't uh, stretch, so it's hard to make, it doesn't compress, and so it's hard to make an anchor lock. Just give it a really quick drop of glue on that. So now we're going to go to the one aught, or the number one, excuse me. We've got the cone already on it. The one is going to be, uh, it's not, you can see the difference in size. We just go up, we go up one size, I don't know if you can see it. Up one size, not quite a big enough jump to make the fly still articulate and do everything it wants. I just, I like to go two sizes on this. Start your thread here. Look where it's hanging. Now we're going to take a piece of the wire. I forgot to get a bead. I don't think I mentioned that. What do I do with those beads? Uh, 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 uh. I use root beer beads for this. The production one I grabbed had a red bead on it. It's supposed to have root beer. Kind of matches the leg color. 
but then again I'm going to cover it all up. So now I, I put my wire in there and I pulled it tight so I get that little kink in it. It just holds it in place. It will be bleeding all over this fly. I have one, just, just one bead on this. And we're going to set it in here. Make sure you're, make, you can see through the glass beads. You can see if the wires are twisted. Make sure they're running parallel to each other. <clears throat> so now, when we set this, before I, I'm going to put a straw over this once everything's, once we're connected. But I want you to see how we're doing this. And I don't go through, I don't go under the, the, the cone through the eyes like I do with my dumbbell eyes. I don't go under, through, and back through the cone. It's just too much stuff. I can never get it to set right. And I've never had one come undone. You'll see what we do here. But now when I'm setting this, I'm going to grab a hold of both ends and pull that until the bead touches. It just touched the hook, and I still have a gap between it about a bead's width. So you can see back here, there's a little tiny gap. This has just touched the hook. I'm not pulling so hard that it's doing, going, doing a wheelie like that. Don't want it way back here. I want it to touch the hook and be, as soon as it does, nice and flat. Now we're going to go forward and we're going to make nice tight wraps. Take Johnny's scissors and cut the wire. He likes when you use his scissors. We go underneath here and now I'm going to come back and I'm, I'm holding the hook so I don't bend the hooks when I'm doing. And I am, I am right at the edge if you could break GSP I'd be right at the edge of breaking it nice and tight then we're going to take just for giggles we're going to throw in here just a touch of zap doesn't take much <clears throat> get the waste out of there now we're going to do this all over again nice and tight just reef on this thing and I pretty much guarantee you, you can't pull that out of there so now we need to put a cover on this and I like to use I like to use the aftershaft of these especially on these uh, variant style feathers because I end up getting just a little bit of dark tip back here. I just think it looks cool. And the beauty of using this, the base of these, is you can come in here and you can get identical match sets. I'm going to take about an inch, leaving a little bit of that fuzz for when I tie that feather in. About an inch. I'm going to come in here, cut that off. Make sure that that cover goes into at least a quarter, third to halfway back the other wing. It's all supposed to... It's all supposed to blend as one. Now I tied that side in. It's just, it's just a cover for the, the bead. Now I'm going to take the other side. You can see this side's missing. I'm going to start right there. I'm going to just take, reach up here. Get. So now I, I've taken the exact amount of both sides. I get a beautiful little cover. It's got that little bit of darkness to the end of it. It's just a, it's just a really cool cover. And you don't, and there's no waste. Okay, take your copper. Now we're basically going to just repeat the steps we already did. Boy, that's right at the edge of short, but I'm going to try to work it. So this one I'm not going to do like I did before, starting at the front. I'm going to start right here. I'm going to go to the midpoint. I'm going to turn that back around so I've caught it. If you've ever tried to skip that step and went to tie in your hackle and grab this thing and pulled it out, you'll know why you fold it around. You can't, you can't pull this out. I mean, it's, you could break the wire, but you're not going to pull it out of there. So let me get this out of my way. And then... I'm going to take my little straw back here and get it off there. Just take a, it's just if you've never seen one of my videos, you just take a, a regular straw, cut it lengthwise so that you can unwrap it, and that allows you to get all these rubber legs out of your way. You just come in here and 
put the straw around it. They're all out of your way, not messing with you. So, thread's hanging right where it belongs right now. We're going to put a dubbing loop in here. This one should be an inch or so longer than the last one. I don't know if I mentioned this, but, and you'll see me take this and I flip this around once like that, twice. And what that does is it just closes the gap down here. It's just, it's just making that tighter. Like you look up here, you can see it's a little bit, still one in there. There's a little gap. I don't, well, you can't see that, I'm sure. That's all it does. It just tightens that gap up so it makes it easier for me to get the dubbing loop in there. Now, I want you to see something here. When I come forward, get your beat, your, your cone all the way forward, and I'm going to stop my, th I'm going to actually put a hitch in here. And what I want you to see by grabbing a sample fly is that there's got to be room to get all this stuff in here, all, everything, and then we're going to put a collar right in front of it. So don't rush right up to the eye. Make sure you've got room to do to put the, you got to put three sets of legs in, you got to put your overwing in, you got to put your hackle in, you got a lot of stuff that still has to go there, and you got to get all in there and then still be able to put that, that little bitty uh, collar in there. So this one's going to, the last one's about three inches long, this one's going to be about four inches long, and I kind of went through it without mentioning it, but I build this taper, it's just, I mean as quick as that, I was already done with it and I remembered I was supposed to show it. So you build this little tiny taper, not much to it. It's hard to get a hold of it so you can see it. So it's it's skinny at the top, thick at the bottom. That's all you're doing. You, you pre-built the taper of the fly. We're going to open this thread up. Set this right up tight to the body. Just lay it in there. And you can, I don't know if you can see that, but it's thinner at the bottom, thicker at the top. And then just try to have it centered when you start and just give your Give your dubbing tool a spin. Look it all over, and you can see it's thin here and thick up here. And I want to show you the beauty. You see, it's a, I don't know, can you see that high, Jeremy? Yep. All right, see, it's a little thinner up here, and it is right there. Watch. This is the beauty of a dubbing tool. You slide this in so they're all the same width, and you re spin it, and now there is no, it's just that fast. You don't have any errors in this stuff. So we're going to take one turn right here, do one complete turn, grab a hold of the, everything right there and stretch it so it's nice and tight. Start moving forward, four or five turns, give it another turn, or another tight, I mean. Now you've built a little tiny taper to this body. It's just, it's finished product that you're looking for. If you sweat the details getting those tapers right, the end product will look much better to you. Now I took that feather and I left just a little bit of that aftershaft, that fuzzy part of the feather. I'm going to tie it so I, and then I can tie it in and get nice, it's just a little bit more bulk right there. Same way as always, we're going to come in here, butt it against the thread, do a figure eight over the top of it, and you want to come around that stem right there. Can you see the stem? Mm -hmm. I want to come around the, the right side of that. I'm going to come from left to right over one, two turns, and then I crank on it, right? So it's nice and tight. If you're using GSP, you should put a, you should put a half hitch in there because it does, it'll slip if you, when you go to transfer. You can get away with it usually, but so I got one, one, almost two turns here. I'm going to come up, I'm going to start my progression, and then Pull on that a little bit. Don't, don't just let everything be loose. Don't be afraid of that thing. Come, make sure you anchor that. Set your fly. Start going back. Now we're going to this. We've already done this once. I mean, not on the front, but we're just repeating the last, you know, last section. We catch that hackle with our wire. Make sure this is kind of loose. Just come through. And just catch all those, you're just anchoring that stuff down. It's going nowhere. Usually you can just break that. Come in here, cut the tip of the, the hackle off. I don't try to get that right to the thing. I always leave it precautionary. I always just leave a little bit in there. Okay. Catch those wires. 
give yourself a nice flat spot. I get a little, had that stem still in there. Nice flat spot to lay out, you know, nice clean. You can see in there, I got a nice clean spot to work on. Now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set three legs on the next one. And by the way, this whole one, two, and three leg or that, that's up to you. You know, you might get out and look at that thing and say, man, I think it look like crap. You're gonna cut a leg up, big deal. Do it, just, you, this, this is how I did it. You know, you get in kind of habits, but I like to have one extra in front. I do it on almost all my flies. I start with two in the back or one in the back, whatever. I just add an extra one up front. Wow, kind of broke that all to pieces. By the way, these things can deteriorate, these legs can. So if you start, I pulled on that one and I, I just pulled on a little too hard, I think. But if they start breaking on you when you're pulling on them, dump them. They're going bad on you. Get it close to, okay, just like before, we're gonna get it close to the center. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna do a figure eight. First check your length that they're, you know, if they're not right right now, just pick it up and set it. Set it the length you want it, right? Just pick it up a little bit, set it. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to take the thread with no pressure on it. I'm just, I don't have any tension on this thread at all. You see how they're rolling all over the place? Make sure you got a figure eight, you got a, you'll see there's an X, you're, you're forming an X with your thread. Look at it, make sure it's right where you want it. Is it right on top? Look right over the top of it. Now do your one, two, and then, I'm gonna, I don't know if you can see that, then you pull straight down. And you can see they just, they're perfectly set. They aren't going anywhere. Finish that, come back over top of it. Now, and, and the thing, especially with these crazy legs, on, on, the, on the round rubber, I don't see it as much, but on the crazy legs and a lot of these things, flexi floss and stuff like that, it's not a biggest deal because that's a little tougher. But on this stuff, if you pull too hard, you'll break them. You'll just cut them with any thread, really. So this one, depending on the thickness of, the, of this marabou, I like this to go back and cover the, the connection cover we put on because that's going back about a third to a half of the first wing. And so I make that the same length, just like that. So put it right in, measure it up, come in. Don't let it get trapped on that cone. Set that. Don't worry too much about this. You can come in, you're gonna catch all this in a second anyway. So now, before anything else, just, just double check right now, before you finish your fly. I'm not saying it's ever happened to me, but take a look at the thing and go, oh crap. I forgot my rubber legs. It's easy to go backwards right now. But you see people, I do tying seminar, seminars all over the place, do them constantly. And we, we talk as we go, which I know that's hard for you to believe that I talk a lot. But we talk as we go and I always ask everybody, is everything right? Everything where it belongs? Yeah, everything's right there. I say, okay, sure. And I walk around the room and if there's 20 people in the room, two people have either forgot the wing, the hackle, the this or that, or something. You know, you just kind of get caught up in it. So just give it an observation right before you finish. Now, you could do this like, you know, you could dub this just traditionally right now if you wanted to. I like loops. I just find them faster for me. And I think they look cool. I don't like that cut in my finger. By the way, if you didn't notice me do that, that's why I reefed on that thread. I was pulling on it and that, that GSP cut through my finger almost instantly. So this is just this is just a decorative color collar. It really doesn't serve much function other than to make the fly look complete because it's hard to by the way, if you were to take a straw out of there right then, you wouldn't be fighting that rubber leg like I am right now. Take that straw, get it out of your way. Tighten your loop back up. Yeah. And what I, I find that, ooh, 
drop my loop. I always tell people, make sure that loop is up and not down. And what did I just do? I'm a little fuzzy right now from dropping that. But what I like to do before I screwed up right there, what I like to do on these is make sure that you'll see your cone head moves back and forth. I like to, I'm going to put just a little bit more on there until I dropped it. I didn't get it quite as tight as I wanted it. I like to try to make sure that folds into the front of this cone so it's just a little bit tighter up there. Cradle. Hmm? The cradle. Oh. Move the bobbin cradle, Jeremy said. Didn't do a very good job of dubbing that in there. But I, I'm pulling this, I just like to kind of force that into the, the cone so it's nice and tight in there. That's fine. Because you can't see this, because you can't see underneath that cone, it's a good idea, you, you know, stuff's falling forward, just hit your, hit your glue, hit your zap. I mean, you could do it however you want, but you just do a whole bunch of half hitches. Just get, you can just barely see, let those drop, those little droplets there, let them work down the thread, just get in there, and then just pull it tight. Just, you put them on there and just pull it nice and tight. They'll, it'll set and you're done. So, give me, get those off of there. Now we've got to trim the legs. Sexy little thing. I had this, my homemade hook keeper in the back there kind of got crazy on me. So, the legs, uh, a disaster going there. The legs should be just short of the length of the tail. Don't stretch them when you cut them, obviously, because they'll bounce back. So just get everything out of the way. Get all the materials out of the way. Just look at it. Come back in there. Cut them so they're about the length of the tail. And these, I just, I make these. I want them to lay back. I'll try to get it where you can see it. I want them to lay back into at least halfway into the tail. And so, but this, on, on most of these, on this fly, you just cut them to length. Just cut them right at the, because we already cut those, we had them centered. All of it's going to be in there. You don't want to, don't short yourself. They're supposed to lay back. When this thing is wet, it's going to lay back. They're going to lay right into the body. And so they're going to kind of become like uh, lateral line, kind of just sitting down the back on the side. And then when you, when you pulse it and when you, you know, stop pulling on it, it'll kind of, the legs will just kind of flare out just a little bit. But, like I, did, like I said earlier, can't see your side, so I'm trying to see what we're looking at here. Like I said earlier, this is kind of a low dress fly. I, I like this fly, and I don't like to retrieve this thing super fast. I like this fly to do a little bit of this, a lot more. You know, when you look at a leech, it kind of swims in this, it, it, they just kind of do that. And I don't want this one to do that so much as a longer like that, just kind of a pulsy thing, just nice and even. This fly, I'm, I'm telling you, is one of the top three big fish producers in this river and every river I've ever fished. I hope that helped you out.